Now, say Dr. Bellon. Come on. Come on, say it for me, Dr. Bellon. Dr. Bellon. Good morning everyone, how you doing? It's Paul here from Unusual Things. Now today is the Halloween special, the one you've all been waiting for. And I hope I've got a good surprise for you. Today I'm currently in Enfield, uh, in the North London area, and we are in Green Street, and we are going to walk outside and have a look at the house at the center of this street in 1977. Round about that time. Because in August 1977, Peggy Hodgson called the Metropolitan Police because her daughters, Janet and Margaret, who were 13 and 11, heard banging in the walls. They report that furniture was moving around in the house by its own accord. And over time, they had over 30 people coming into this house, reporters, investigators, and so many more police officers. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that real soon. And today, we're going to go outside the house and have a look at it. But not only that, we are going to go to the final resting places of Peggy Hodgson, the mother, um, who was, of course, a single mother back then, of four children. And we're going to go to the final resting place as well of Bill Wilkins. Now, Bill Wilkins is a man that died in that house many years beforehand and is reported to actually be the poltergeist that haunts it. And what I want to do today is see if I can make contact with him at his gravestone to ask those inevitable questions. Did you haunt that house back all those years ago in the 70s? Or, as some reports state, were those children playing tricks on everyone that came into that house were Janet and Margaret behind the whole scheme of the 284 Green Street house in Enfield? That's some of the questions we want to answer today on this Halloween special. Stay tuned. So I have now come to Green Street in Enfield and we are going to go outside number 284. Now this is where, in August 1977, Peggy Hodgson called the Metropolitan Police because her daughters, Janet and Margaret, had seen and experienced levitation of items around the house and heard bangings within the wall. So we're gonna go up outside 284 Green Street now. Now we've got to be careful, obviously it's a residential area and there's a school here. Now this school that's to my right is also where they filmed um, the Conjuring Part 2. I'm a bit hesitant to film over the wall because it's not on. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and film outside 284 Green Street now. Um, I, I've heard that some of the neighbours, and rightly so, get a little bit annoyed with people coming up and, uh, you know, filming outside. But we're going to have a look. We'll see what we can find, shall we? Now I'm just being a bit mindful here. There are people outside and it's that time of day where kids are going to school. But where this crossing is here, directly opposite is 284, which is the house, uh, reportedly from the Enfield haunting. Um, so we'll just cross over the road here, thank you.
Now it's one of those things where you don't want to be filming around too much outside someone's house. So we have to be a little bit conscientious. Uh, people live here, you know, but I'm going to walk back that way. So we'll try and get another little shot in a moment if we can. Um, but at least we've seen it. At least we've been outside. Um, I'll try and walk back a bit slower on the way back. That is Green Street 284, where all that activity allegedly took place. Like I say, next door neighbors have got CCTV ca cameras up, CCTV cameras up. So they're obviously conscious of it and are aware and, you know, probably get fed up with it. But this is the house here with the blue door. where allegedly all the hauntings took place. So there we have 284 Green Street, the Enfield Haunting House. Okay, so we have now come to Hartford Road Cemetery in Enfield, and we're gonna look for the final resting place of Peggy Hodgson, the mother, of course, of the children, especially the two uh, girls who were 13 and 11, Janet, and Margaret, who uh, had the most claims in this house of Green Street. So we're gonna go and look for her final resting place now in this cemetery. It's quite a nice, peaceful, chilled autumn morning in here, as you can see. Okay, so we're gonna have a little look around. As we have a little look around, I'll tell you a little bit more about the Enfield haunting. Now, just to let you know, there's lots of TV shows, there's lots of radio shows, uh, theatre shows, I think now coming into production. So many things about this case. I'm not going to go into too much detail because it is too in-depth and I will be here a month of Sundays, but you can watch lots of TV shows um, online and of course on some of the catch-up services that are about on TV. Um, and it's worth going to watch, you know, The Conjuring 2, the film is light-heartedly based on the Enfield Street haunting as well. When I say light-heartedly based, it's fictional, you know, Hollywood style, but it covers some of what happened and so forth. And also, um, Ed and Lorraine Warren, who are really well known within the paranormal field for investigating paranormal, um, came to the house as well and did an investigation, but, there are some skeptics that say Ed sort of beefed it up a little bit to make it sound more like there was a demonic possession there um, or demonic entity within the house, I should say. Um, but again, it's down for you to decide. It's not for me to give you that information. You know, like I said, there's lots of things that you can read on it, lots of things you can watch on it, but it's definitely worth looking into. But we're going to have a look now for Peggy's grave. The Enfield Poltergeist was a claim of supernatural activity at 284 Green Street, a council house in Brimsdown, Enfield, London, between 1977 and 1979. The alleged poltergeist activity centres on sisters Janet Eleven and Margaret Hodgson, aged 13. Some members of the Society of Psychical Research, SPR, such as inventor Maurice Gross and writer Guy Leon Playfair, believe the haunting to be genuine while others such as Anita Gregory and John Beloff were unconvinced and found evidence that the girls had faked incidents for the benefit of journalists. So these are some of the sort of things that you have to look into when you look into such a case as the Enfield haunting. You know, were these girls faking it? Or was it all genuine? Some reports said that they may have some sign of schizophrenic activity going on within them. Um, but that's very hard to tell because things were diagnosed differently those days as what they would be in today's society. Members of the Committee of the Scientific Investigation of Claims of Paranormal, including stage magicians such as Milbourne Christopher and Joe Nicholl, criticised paranormal investigators for being credulous, whilst also identifying elements of the case as being indicative of a hoax. 
So some people, again, you know, magicians and things like that, they weren't believing the girls. They believed that they could sort of see past some of the antics that were going on and uh, blow it all out of the water, really. Now, this story attracted press coverage in British newspapers and had been mentioned in books, featured in television and radio documentaries, as I said, and dramatised in the 2016 horror film The Conjuring 2. In August 1977, single parent Peggy Hodgson called the Metropolitan Police to her rented home at 284 Green Street in Enfield, saying she had witnessed furniture moving and that two of her four children had heard knocking sounds on the walls. The children included Janet, 11, and Margaret, age 13. A woman police constable reported witnessing a chair wobble and slide, but could not determine the cause of the movement. Later claims included disembodied voices, loud noises, thrown toys, overturned chairs, and children levitating. I suppose when you have those sorts of claims, to that extent, you know, you have to look into it, don't you? You have to, you know, what, what can the police do? They have to try and get some sort of scientist involved or a paranormal researcher. So especially in the late 70s when there wasn't the social media element, you know, and the police didn't really know who to contact. Um, obviously things about the paranormal were heard of and people would have known about it, but it would have been far less in the public eye. It would have been less of a common knowledge thing these days. If you rung the police and went, oh God, I think I've got a ghost in my house. A, they'd either go, well, ring a paranormal investigator, or B, they'd tell you to stop wasting their time, basically. But back then in the late 70s, you know, young girl reports that something, or two young girls and a mother, report that something so serious is happening in the house. How do you deal with that? Do you ignore them? Do you play up to it? Do you feed into it? You know, if these girls are messing around, how much time, resources, do you waste in looking into this series of events that happened over a grand total of about 18, 19 months? And where do you draw the line if you don't actually see any evidence in there as a commanding police officer or an inspector or something like that? Where do you draw the line and say, stop wasting the resources and the time on these young girls? Because they good chance that they're faking all this. Who knows? Knock one for no and two for yes. Are you a male spirit? One for no and two for yes. Two. That's two. You are a male spirit. Did you used to live in this house? You did. Was it, was it more than 50 years ago? Yes. Did you, did you die in this house? Did you pass on? You did pass on in this house. Now why are you here? Are you unhappy? You're not unhappy. But why are you here? Is it because you want to give us a special message? No. You don't want to give us a special message. Okay, so I've been having a good look around in this cemetery and I can't find Peggy Hodgson anywhere. Margaret is her real name. Um, anywhere in the cemetery. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive to where Bill is buried. And we're gonna see if she's buried there as well. I was led to believe that they were in two separate different cemeteries. This one is literally around the corner from Green Street. So it makes sense that she's in here. Um, and not three miles up the road where Bill is buried. Why would you put them both in the same cemetery? Bill obviously went long before Peggy. Um, and also what I'm gonna do is there's a little churchyard on the outside of here as well as you drive out. So I'll have a little look in the churchyard just to make sure to cover all the bases. But I have been around every, I've seen a photo of what her headstone looks like on the website. And I've walked around the cemetery about three times and I can't see it anywhere. So we'll, we'll investigate a little bit further to see if we can still pay our respects, of course, to where Peggy is buried. But we're most importantly, 
continue our journey to go and find the grave of Will, William, Bill, the man who's supposed to be the poltergeist that haunted 284 Green Street in Enfield. Now, I don't know if anyone has ever gone to a grave before and tried to make contact with someone who is allegedly supposed to be a poltergeist. I don't know if it's ever been done, but we're definitely doing it today here. Okay, so as we continue on our journey, in the next door cemetery uh, is Margaret Peggy Hodgson. Now, I thought she was miles away from where William Wilkins is buried, but she's not. She's literally in the next door cemetery. Now, from what I understand, the funeral will be taking place in here real soon, so I'm gonna to have to make this real quick, but I will show you where Margaret Blesser is buried. Cherished memories of our loving mum, Margaret Hodgson Peggy. Born 15th January 1930, passed away peacefully 14th of October 2003. Sadly missed but never forgotten, your loving family. And there's Peggy there, look. So here we have the final resting place of Margaret Hodgson, Peggy, who was the mother to the two girls, well the four kids actually, that lived in Green Street, Enfield, and had to put up with whatever was going on in that house. So hope you're at peace now, Peggy. Bless you. So there, Peggy, she's literally in the next cemetery along from William Wilkins. And I've seen a video clip where Janet and Margaret are saying that she's buried completely different area. Um, about three miles apart, but she's not, she's quite close. Now I'm gonna get a move on because like I say, there is gonna be a funeral taking place here real soon. Hi everyone, we are now at Lavender Hill Cemetery and this is the final resting place of Bill Wilkins. Bill being the alleged poltergeist name that was at 284 Green Street, Enfield. Now there are some grass cutters in the background, just make sure my mic's on. <laughs> um, so hopefully they won't interfere in our um, viewing the final resting place of Bill and of course, we're gonna try and make contact with him if we can. We're gonna just do a couple of little experiments to see if we can actually contact the man that was allegedly haunting 284 Green Street, Enfield. So we'll have a little walk around here and I'll tell you a little bit more about what went on with the Enfield haunting. Now this story was regularly covered in the Daily Mirror newspaper until reports came to an end in 1979. Society of Psychical Research, SPR members, Maurice Gross and Guy Leon Playfair reported curious whistling and barking noises coming from Janet's general direction. Although Playfair maintained the paranormal activity was genuine and wrote in his later book, This House is Haunted, The True Story of a Poltergeist, 1980, that an entity was to blame for the Enfield disturbances. He often doubted the children's veracity and wondered if they were playing tricks and exaggerating. Still, Gross and Playfair believed that even though some of the alleged poltergeist activity was faked by the girls, other incidents were genuine. Other paranormal investigators who studied the case included American demonologists Ed and Lorraine Warren, who visited the Enfield house in 1978 and were convinced that the events had a supernatural explanation. Janet was detected in trickery. A video camera in an adjoining room caught her bending spoons and attempting to bend an iron bar. Gross had observed Janet banging a broom handle on the ceiling and hiding his tape recorder. According to Playfair, one of Janet's voices, whom she called Bill, displayed a habit of suddenly changing the topic. It was a habit Janet also had. When Janet and Margaret admitted pranking to journalists, Gross and Playfair compelled the girls to retract their confessions. The two men were mocked by other researchers for being easily duped. Psychical researcher Rene Haynes noted that doubts were raised about the alleged poltergeist voice at the SPR conference at Cambridge in 1978, where video cassettes from Enfield were examined. 
SPR investigator Anita Gregory stated the Enfield case had been overrated, characterising episodes of the girls' behaviour as suspicious and speculated that the girls had staged some of the incidents. John Beloff, a former president of the SPR, investigated and suggested Janet was practising ventriloquism. Both Beloff and Gregory came to the conclusion that Janet and Margaret were playing tricks on the investigators. A 2016 article by psychology professor Chris French in Time Out magazine described five reasons why he believed the case to have been a hoax. His reasons are, the two sisters involved had admitted to hoaxing some of the activity. The photo of Janet levitating above the bed could just as easily be explained by Janet jumping. The spirit of an old man who supposedly possessed Janet took a great deal of interest in menstruation. Eyewitnesses are notoriously unreliable. Other schoolgirl pranks before and after have gotten out of hand. So there we are, there's some information there about the Enfield haunting. Now, as I said earlier on, this is such an open case, as in there's some that believe, there's some that don't. It's one of those where you have to make up your own mind. It's very difficult. What I am gonna do is show you, um, I'm gonna put it on the screen here, a copy of the death certificate to show that there was a Bill Wilkins that actually lived in that property. When the family first moved into Green Street, Peggy was informed about a man that died in the house many years earlier by the name of Bill Wilkins. And it's quite possible that the girls overheard this and just played on it, you know, and used his name as a way of just making things up. Maybe they wanted attention. Maybe they were just going through that stage in their life where they were going through their periods and so forth. And it was causing them psychological issues. You don't know, there's a lot of things to question. There's so many variables in this. But like I said earlier, I would recommend going to watch some of the TV shows because you'll get a good idea of what went on and you'll see the house in a different light from what we saw earlier as we walked past. Now we're coming up to where I believe Bill is buried. And this is gonna be quite interesting because like I said, I just wanna see if we get any reaction, anything from Bill's final resting place. Not to be disrespectful, of course, that's the most important thing that I must stress here. I'm not coming here to be to disrespectful or to mock. And who's to say, uh, if there is a spiritual afterlife, that he's even here. Why would he be here today? Well, you know, irrelevant. But however, let's just go and ask some questions. I'm doing it with the utmost respect. Uh, for those of you concerned about my safety, um, I've done this many times before. I've investigated the paranormal for over 20 years. I've been in some real dodgy places, some dodgy situations. Um, I've been taught by some people how to protect myself before and after doing these sorts of things. So I will do that, so don't worry about that, okay? Um, but we'll just go and have a look. And I'm just having a look now. And you know what? I think, I think I found it. It looks like it. Let's go and have a look. I think it's this second one in here. So it's William Wilkins we're looking for. Walter Reynolds. Ah, so that's not it. <coughs> wow. <laughs> so that's not it. That's not the grave of William Wilkins. Right, guys, so now we're gonna to have to do a little bit of a treasure hunt amongst all this lot. I thought that was it, it looked like, I've seen the picture of it, it's the same shape, same everything. Now, these sort of graves here were sort of like 60s, 70s. The rest seem to be a bit more modern. So, previous experience tells me, stick with what you know, trust your gut instinct, I think Bill Wilkins is still in here. I wish that grass cutter would bugger off and go away. But I still think he's in here. We're going to have a good look around, okay? So we're going to go eyes down, and I need you all to join in for this one. 
Mind you saying that, by the time you get to watch it, I'd have either found it or not. So we'll have a little look, shall we? I'll tell you what though, that's the shape I'm looking for. I know it's that shape. Okay, so that's Walter Reynolds. So we've got to go up here and have a look now. It's a bit windy. Hopefully the, uh, the mic's picking me up. I've brought a separate mic to the camera. So hopefully that's okay. Right, now I'm going to hold the camera in one position, but my eyes are going to be scanning like anything to have a look. So you guys just enjoy the view for a minute and um, I'll have a quick proper look around to see if I can see it. Um, just keep coming up. Okay, that's a different shape, that's a different shape. I'm just looking for the shape, that top bit that I found earlier on and uh, having a good look around here. Okay, now I can see the shape of one with some flowers on up there. I won't say I think I found it in case I'm wrong, but I've, I've already said that anyway, haven't I? So let's have a look. Ah, oh, come on. This looks promising, this looks promising. <sighs> Treasured memories of a dear husband and father, William Charles Wilkins. So man, died 20th June 1962, age 61 years. Also, um, Ethel May Wilkins died the 19th of April 1972, age 64 years. Wow, so there we have it. Bill Wilkins. Okay, so, um, I've put a cat ball down there and an EMF reader down there. And I'm gonna get me voice recorder out, okay? And I'm just gonna ask a couple of questions to see if Bill is here and if he wants to answer any questions at all. Now we come here respectfully, Bill, um, and to your dear wife, of course. And, but we just wanna ask some questions and if you don't wanna answer, that's fine. And if you do wanna answer, please just talk into this little machine here. So I'm just gonna start it recording. And it's just typical that the grass cutter has now moved right in over there, right next to where we don't want him really. Okay, so um, I'm gonna put this out. Bill, are you here at all? Is the spirit of Bill Wilkins here? Do you want to communicate with us at all? Now I'm sorry that the questions are so blunt, Bill, if you are here, but did you haunt Green Street in Enfield, the house that you died in, the house you used to live in? Did you terrorize that family? Did they make it up? I'm going to put this out. Bill, are you here at all? Is the spirit of Bill Wilkins here? Do you want to communicate with us at all? Now, I'm sorry that the questions are so blunt, Bill, if you are here. But did you haunt Green Street? in Enfield, the house that you died in, the house you used to live in. Did you terrorise that family? Did they make it up? Stop. Okay, so we've got nothing at all there. Uh, we'll try one more time with the EVPs. Come here respectfully, Bill. Now there's reports that you haunted 284 Green Street in Enfield, the house that you used to live in for many years and sadly passed away in. Now was that all true? Did that family make it up? Are you just resting in peace and want to be left alone? If you're here, Bill, can you make the ball light up or that machine? Light up at all, please. I'm here out of respect. Is the spirit of Bill Wilkins here? Come here respectfully, Bill. Now there's reports that you haunted 284 Green Street in Enfield, 
the house that you used to live in for many years and sadly he passed away in. Now was that all true? Did that family make it up? Are you just resting in peace and want to be left alone? If you're here, Bill, can you make the ball light up or that machine light up at all, please? I'm here out of respect. And then the uh, grass, kitter kick, grass cutter kicked in again. So we've tried some EVPs. What I'm going to do now is just, I'm going to leave the cat ball and the EMF machine on there. And what I'm going to do is just see if I'm going to open a mini SLS camera and we're going to see straight away look. I don't know if you can see that. Straight away, there's looks like something's trying to manifest near Bill's grave. Bizarre, that thing's still going off, look. Looks like someone's trying to get a leg out, look. Stand up, stand up tall for us. Come on, show yourself. Okay, uh, we're just gonna open the necrophonic now. Nothing's going off on the EMF reader or the ball at all. So we we'll put the reverb on, we'll start. Bill Wilkins, are you here at all? I'm holding it near my mic. Do you want to communicate with us? Bill, I just want to ask one question. Did you haunt Green Street? Did you play up that family in your home? Bill. Did you go to Green Street after you passed away? Yes. Yes. Did you haunt that family? No. It sounds like the same deep voice coming through again. Bill, was that you? The one with the deep voice, was that you, Bill? I'm here respectfully. Did you pass away in 284 Green Street? Can you make the lights go up on one of these machines? Do you want to communicate, Bill, and tell your story? Tell us what happened. Did the haunting of Green Street have anything to do with you? What, was there some other entity there? Did those girls fake everything? Or was there a big fuss made over it for no reason at all? Do you want the whole thing forgotten about?
Bill, tell me what day it is. Where are we? Do you have any message that you want to give to us at all? I'm going to go in a minute, Bill, and leave you in peace, or any other spirits that are here. Any other spirits want to leave me a message? Leave. OK, I'm going to leave you in peace, OK? Goodbye. Goodbye, spirits. OK, I'm going to try one more thing while I'm here. Um, just see if get any words come through. Any spirits here want to leave me any messages at all or any words? Have you got anything to say? Burned. It says burned. What's burned? Were you burned? Were you cremated? Anything else you want to say? Any other messages at all? Anything else at all you want to tell me? Or you want to say to me? Nothing at all. Just burned. Okay, fair enough. Here, I want to try one more time one of the other apps that I did try when I was here recently. Okay. Um, it's a spirit talker one. Again, it's an app, so we don't know. But we'll give it a go, all right? We'll see if it comes through with any words and if there's anything related to the Enfield haunting uh, and this man. Um, let's see if we can uh, get it started. Right, okay, so we've got it started there. And we'll just see if anything comes up. Okay, there's any spirits here that would like to communicate with us. William Wilkins, are you here? Did you haunt that house in Enfield? This is my home. Wow. And that's part of what the girls were saying. They were saying that he was claiming it's his house. So did you actually haunt that location? Did those girls make that up? That whole story of them being thrown around, things moving, objects going around in the house? Or was that you doing that? Come on, Bill, talk to us. Is there anything else you want to say? So all we've got is this is my home, which is, you know, it was, he died in that appear. house. Appear. Did you appear in that house? Are you going to appear now? Did you appear to those girls? Was that your voice in the house? Did you manifest yourself there? Colin. Colin? Now I'm going to need to look into the name Colin. Nothing off the top of my head jumps out about that. Do you have anything else you want to say to us at all, Bill, before I leave? I'm going to leave you in peace. Bless you. I hope you found peace. 
and that you can move on. I'll leave the app open one, one more minute just to see if there's anything else that comes out at all. Apart from that magpie over there, <laughs> you may not have heard that. Do you have one more thing you'd like to say to us as a parting word or saying or proof? That might be it, might be all we're getting. I'm hiding. I'm hiding. Where are you hiding, Bill? Are you hiding in the house? Are you hiding here in the cemetery? What are you hiding from? I just need to keep it open, guys and girls, because I will need to hear what he's hiding from. What are you hiding from? Sister. And sister. The girls, you know, two sisters. <sighs> anyway, you know, you can read as much as you like into those and uh, make your own interpretations into it, but some of it was relevant to with what happened with the house, with him, um, and obviously the sisters, the two sisters that were the main ones that were having all the issue. I don't think the other two kids experienced as much. I think they experienced something, um, but it's interesting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave Bill here. Bill, your spirit can stay here. Carry on resting in peace. And uh, we will leave this beautiful, peaceful, but rainy cemetery. So there we have it everyone, the final resting place of Bill Wilkins. Thank you Bill, bless you. And um, not really anything to go from, nothing concrete. Uh, you know, the SLS gave us a couple of little figures that appeared. Nothing really audible. I'll have to listen to the Necrophonic again when I'm editing this. And of course I'll have to listen to the um, voice recorder when I'm editing this as well, because you don't always hear things at the time. And obviously we've got the grass cutter going on there in the background as well. Um, I do hope you've enjoyed this Halloween special on making contact with a poltergeist. Did Bill William Wilkins really haunt 284 Green Street, Enfield? Did those girls make it up? Janet and Margaret. And did they dupe their mum, Peggy, into calling the police and the authorities and getting reporters around and paranormal investigators and to get Ed and Lorraine Warren from America to come over and look at your house? But they said, Ed and Lorraine, very experienced paranormal investigators, they believed it was haunted. You have to draw your own conclusions. I can't answer them for you, so I want you just to have a look, watch the TV shows, read the books, listen to the audible that's out there. There's so many things on the Enfield haunting um, that it's definitely worth looking into. And uh, thank you as always for watching this Halloween special. I hope you have a fantastic and happy Halloween. Leave your comments down below. Please like and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you all on the next one. Take it easy. Now, say Dr. Bellon. Come on. Come on, say it for me, Dr. Bellon. Dr. Bellon.